Formula One racing has been a sport since before World War II, but it has subsequently become a global phenomenon that is now watched by millions of people. From monstrous V12s down to tiny V6 engines, Formula One has done a lot in the past few decades to become an eco-friendlier sport. Over the years, the sport has had a lot of criticism for being too harsh on the environment. But how bad F1 is for the environment is a complex issue. F1 is not as bad for the environment as many people think. One full year of racing uses less fuel than a 747's flight over the Atlantic. Moreover, the sport will have a net zero carbon footprint by the year 2030. And this will be achieved by largely moving to 100% sustainable fuels. In the past, Formula One has received a huge amount of criticism from many people, especially environmentalists, for being too harsh on the environment. It's understandable when you consider that the cars used to use massive gas-guzzling V12 engines. In 2012 and 2013, F1 saw a lot of protests against the races, especially during the European events. At this time, the sport was still using V8 engines, which weren't the most fuel-efficient, and their emissions weren't small either. The following year, the new engine regulations were implemented, and the cars went from the V8 engines down to the relatively tiny 1.6-liter V6 turbo hybrid engines. The aim was to create cars that are more efficient and less wasteful. In 2019, Formula One released a report that showed how the sport affected the environment. The total carbon emissions of a Formula One season is estimated to be 256,551 tons of carbon dioxide. Formula One is bad for the environment, and it's not just because of all the carbon dioxide they pump into the atmosphere. It's also because of all the animals they kill when they don't have enough space to run them. However, it's not the cars that are at fault here. In fact, the cars are only responsible for 0.7% of the sport's total emissions. That's not a lot for a sport that relies on combustion power to run events year-round through a total of 20-plus different races, with three practice sessions, qualifying, the occasional sprint race, and a full race. In addition, it was stated that all of the cars combined only use 150,000 liters of fuel for an entire season's worth of driving. This includes preseason testing and all other sessions during a Formula One race weekend. To compare, a Boeing 747 uses about the same amount of fuel for a 10-hour flight. If this is so, then where do the emissions come from? So if the cars are only responsible for 0.7% of Formula One's total CO2 emissions, where does the rest come from? The rest of the carbon emissions are simply a result of traveling the world to get to different races. Formula One teams need to transport their cars, equipment, and their staff to each event. This is usually done by plane, rental cars, motorhomes, and transport trucks. This is where most of the emissions in the sport come from. It can still be argued that Formula One are still at fault for these emissions because of the fact that they need to travel to different countries for each race. However, the sport is currently working on a plan to improve this aspect. Although emissions from cars are a tiny percentage of the pollution produced by motorsport, they're the most obvious element. Compared to the carbon dioxide produced by the vehicles themselves, Tire particulate pollution is a less obvious concern. But these two are a source of potentially harmful emissions, one the sport is increasingly realizing it must address. Each driver currently receives 24 tire sets per ordinary weekend, while the series will trial a reduction at two rounds next year. Over a 23-race season, this comes to well over 9,000 tires, and that's before testing is taken into consideration. It might seem counterintuitive to look at the carbon fiber chassis and fuel-burning engine of a race car and point at the tires as one of the least environmentally friendly parts of it. After all, they are made of rubber. What's wrong with using something plant-based? A significant percentage of natural rubber is used in their manufacture, although much of the construction of the outer part of a tire is from oil, essentially a form of plastic. The basis does start in natural rubber even for something as bespoke as Pirelli's F1 tires, Given about 23 liters of oil go into a standard road tire, it might seem surprising that tire makers are interested to find alternatives to the rubber rather than the fossil fuel component. The growing number of street races on the Formula One calendar may unexpectedly put greater focus on the pollution produced by its tires. Tire rubber degrades on any car. Particulate pollution from tires has been suggested to be up to 1,000 times worse than from exhaust fumes in cities and has a serious environmental impact in coastal and riverside areas, contributing significantly to marine microplastic contamination. New tire constructions, which negate or capture particulates, are being researched and produced. 
offering an obvious opportunity for motorsport to contribute to developing greener technologies. It's all a bit of a scam, really. Formula One is just a bunch of rich people doing something so they can pretend to be like superheroes and save the planet. It's not even real, you know? That's right, you've been hoodwinked by F1, the world's biggest scam. <laughs> just kidding. Motorsport has never had an easy balance between impact and excitement, but at a sensitive moment for the automotive industry, staying in front of the discussion will be crucial to future contracts for races and suppliers. What has F1 done to reduce its carbon footprint? Formula One has put a massive focus on improving their carbon footprint over recent years through engine regulation changes and sustainable events. F1 racing is well aware of the environmental impact that their sport can have on the world, in the same way that they're well aware of the safety issues that it can cause. Those safety concerns are continually addressed, while F1 has begun to address those environmental concerns through new technologies. Some of these strides that F1 has made have been quiet, but they have been impactful all the same. This includes pushing for Formula E, electric vehicles that can operate throughout the course of a full race. In other cases, improved braking systems and aerodynamics will allow for more fuel-efficient vehicles. That's before hybrid engines and biofuels are considered. All of this will help cut into F1 Racing's current 256,000 tons of carbon impact a year. Moreover, the FIA announced in 2020 that it was developing a 100% sustainable fuel and that engine manufacturers were already testing it, with the goal of utilizing it by 2026. It is said to be the most sophisticated form of biofuel, which is often created from industrial or agricultural waste byproducts. F1 cars already employ biofuels, although current regulations only need 5.75% biocomponents in the fuel. The FIA intends to shift to 100% advanced sustainable fuels by 2025, when new power units are offered for competition. There is no question that Formula One is bad for the environment. Their CO2 emissions make that clear. It's important to recognize that the organization is making a concerted effort to lessen the blow on the planet. This comes especially after several protests and criticisms of the sport being too harsh on the environment and contributing to global warming. It's not only the protests and criticisms that have been bad for Formula One, though. Overall, the sport's reputation has taken a big hit because of the fact that it is not as eco-friendly as it could be, which affects the sport's viewership numbers and ability to land sponsors. There's more to be done, for sure. But Formula One is taking great strides to reduce its carbon footprint and looks to be doing just that. Formula One must keep innovating and refining its hybrid technology and working on ways to cut down CO2 emissions in other areas of the Formula One infrastructure. This is not a sport that should be abandoned for the green pastures of Formula E. There is room for both on the racetrack. So if we can continue to encourage environmental mindfulness, then we can still make a difference with the cars we drive. And that's a good thing, because besides saving the planet, it lets us watch just a little more Formula One. Well, that's it from this video. What do you think about the impact of Formula One on the environment? Do you think Formula One is doing great to go carbon neutral by 2030? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also, consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.